All right, so for this, for the second side of the graphic organizer, it says, the side that says, how can you prove lines are parallel? So the idea here is we don't know if the lines are parallel. And what we're interested in is how do we figure it out? So we, we don't, know, don't, don't know that they're parallel. We can't say all that stuff that we said on the other side of the graphic organizer because we don't know that they're parallel. And we want to know, well, if we don't know, how can we figure it out? All right, so you, you're uh, on the top left. It says using corresponding angles. So what we're going to say is that if we have some kind of information that tells us that corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So I'm going to say if corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So some, we get some kind of information, we have some kind of information, we can figure out that the pair of corresponding angles are congruent, then, we're, then we know that the lines are parallel. So just a reminder on your graphic organizer, we would say in symbols, if uh, angle one congruent to angle five, and any one of these pairs would work, angle two congruent to angle six, angle four congruent to angle eight, or angle three congruent to angle seven. Then the lines are parallel. And the way I would usually say this, if we figure out that we have corresponding angles are congruent, I would say the lines are parallel because corresponding angles are congruent. The way your book will say it is they will say the lines are parallel by the converse of the corresponding angles theorem. So when your book says converse, we use the converse to show that lines are parallel. I'll just say because corresponding angles are congruent, your book says the converse of corresponding angles. So just be aware of that. All right, the second way that we can show that lines are parallel. Let's go to the top right consecutive or same side interior angles. So what we're going to say here is that if same side interior angles are supplementary then the lines are parallel. So somehow we get some information or we figure out that the same side interior angles add up to 180 degrees. That guarantees us that the lines are parallel. So in symbols, we'd say for your graphic organizer, if measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 180, or uh, the measure of angle 3 plus a measure of angle 8 equals 180. Then the lines are parallel. And again, what I would say is the lines are parallel because same side interior angles are supplementary. Your book will say be by the converse of the same side interior angle theorem, something like that. All right, we're good so far. So really what we're doing is taking what we did on Friday and, and going in reverse. Uh, so we have alternate interior angles. 
So the box on the lower left. So what we're going to say here is that if our alternate interior angles, I'm going to use abbreviations here, alt int angles are congruent, alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So if we figure out that alternate interior angles are parallel, that guarantees us that the line, or sorry, alternate interior angles are congruent, that guarantees us that the lines are parallel. So in symbols, I'd say if angle 2 congruent to angle 8, or angle 3 congruent to angle 5. Then the lines are parallel. And I will say, I would say because the alternate interior angles are congruent, the lines are parallel, your book would say the converse of the alternate interior angle theorem. They will use converse to, to show that lines are parallel. The last box uh, on the top part of your graphic organizer, we'll do the bottom part tomorrow, um, alternate exterior angles. So what we're going to say here is that if alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. And from your graphic organizer, the information there, if angle 1 is congruent to angle 7, or the other pair of alternate exterior angles, angle 4, congruent to angle 6, then the lines are parallel. And I would say the lines are parallel because alternate exterior angles are congruent. Your book would say by the converse of the alternate exterior angles theorem. All right, there's one, one box on they, that they, they left off the, the graphic organizer. So maybe right along the bottom of the parallel lines, you could add this in, because this is another way that we can show that they're parallel. Um, same side exterior angles. So just like we've said before, if, I'm going to say SS for same side, exterior angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. And on your graphic organizer, that would be if the measure of angle 1 and 6 plus the measure of angle 6 is 180, or the measure of angle 4 and 7. Measure of angle 4 plus the measure of angle 7 is 180. The lines are parallel. Questions there? Okay. Um, so what I want to do is go through a couple of examples of using this, how we might use this information. So let's look at an example.
So there are my lines. I'm going to call this line A and B. And I'm going to say this is x plus 5 and 2x plus 3. And the question might be what value of x makes the lines parallel? So we don't know that the lines are parallel. We want to figure out if what, how would we how would we be able to tell? So we look at the lines in the transversal and we say, well, what kind of what kind of angles are those? Same side interior. So what would have to be true about same side interior angles for the lines to be parallel? They have to be supplementary. So we need x plus five plus 2x plus 3 to equal 180. So then we just solve for x. So I get 3x plus 8 equals 180 when I combine like terms. Subtract 8, 3x equals 172. Divide by 3, and I get uh, x equals... 57.33 repeating. So as long as x equals 57.33, those lines would be parallel. If x equaled anything else, those lines would not be parallel. So if we had some other piece of information in the problem that said x was 58, then the lines wouldn't be parallel. 57.33 is the only way, x equals 57.33 is the only way that those lines can be parallel. All right, questions there? Okay, one more example. So I'm going to draw two sets of lines. And I'm going to call this one M and N and A and B. And this 2 and 3. And I'm going to say which lines are parallel if angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. So what I would suggest for this kind of problem, similar to what we did with the opener, is either in your, in your head or if you, if you have highlighters or something, I would say, well, angle 2 and 3 have to do with those lines. Line B doesn't have anything to do with angle 2 or 3. So really, we can just ignore line B. Well, if, if we're looking at angle 2 and 3, what, what kind of angles would those be for these two lines in this transversal? Alternate interior. Well, if alternate interior angles are congruent, then which, which pair of lines is going to be parallel? M has to be parallel to N. And what I would say is because alternate interior angles are congruent. That would be why they're parallel. The book would say that by the converse of the alternate interior angle theorem. All right, questions? Okay, that's all I wanted to talk about today. We'll do the rest of that graphic organizer tomorrow. All right, there's the homework.